Hey guys, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm Shanti. <laughs> this is our home on wheels. Welcome, Welcome to, to our bus. bus. Welcome to our kitchen. Probably my favorite spot in the entire rig because we did not compromise. We decided that, well, I spent a lot of time in here. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure it was comfortable and spacious and had everything plus more. Um, so what you can see here, of course, we've got the, the butcher block countertops, sturdy, solid, and really, really durable. Um, just like in our last bus, we had a copper sink and we love it because it's easy to keep clean. It's anti mech Anti-microbial. Our copper sink is anti-microbial. So the copper sink, we love it. It's huge compared to a lot of tiny homes on wheels. We went for the width and the depth because we have a child and dishes just magically appear in our sink all of the time. Um, this is recent. We hung this. I know a lot of people do the really cool hammocks, but we decided to go with just the stationary uh, bins to hold our fruits and veggies. Matching with the sink, we did copper for our upper shelves. We went with copper. We wanted all of the elements. We love wood, but we didn't want like a cabin feel necessarily. So we've got the copper, wood. Our backsplash is copper. It is peel and stick, but it went on really nicely. And I think it's a great touch. Moving back to the, the back part of our kitchen, we've got a three burner stove top, which I love, and an oven and two fancy drawers that came with it. Uh, this is a cedar piece. Now we got a lot of live edge. We use it everywhere. We have countertops, our wall piece, all of our window seals, cedar. It smelled glorious when we were building in here. It was fantastic. Uh, this is our pantry and it was another must have for me because I didn't want to feel like I was shoving things into tight spaces. So we have this full pantry that has all of our storage. This is our favorite drawer. We have 41 drawers in here, by the way, in the entire rig. This one just is the pull out monster. Five drawers that I intended on being perfectly organized. They ended up being just snacks, snacks, and then snacks, more snacks. We went with a big fridge primarily because it gives us more time off of grid. You know, when prior we would have to go into town to restock over and over again. With this beast of a fridge, we can go up in the hills and stay gone for a long time. So we've been living on the road for three years full time. We moved into our first bus when Shanti was eight months old. So it's all she's really ever known. And now we're in our second bus and we've been in, in it for about five months and we love the space, but we've just been craving a different experience. And we wanna go volunteer internationally. As much as we would love to take this bus abroad, <laughs> yeah. it, it's not that easy. So we, it's a bittersweet selling, but we are going to sell this rig to somebody who will use it and appreciate it and love it as much as we have. Uh, so we're gonna downsize to uh, three backpacks and hit the road. Nope, hit the skies. <laughs> yeah. And then go travel abroad and, and volunteer our time. Yeah, it's it's bittersweet because we, we were not planning to do this. We were planning to be in this bus for a long time. That's why we invested all the money into it, why we did so much work on it to make it like full-time home, completely off-grid, and off grid for a lengthy amount of time. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. just a week or two. This thing can rock out for quite some time. Yeah. When, when we say off grid, it's not like, hey, we're like camping without power hookups. Like we have AC, 200 gallons of water. I mean, like this thing is really made to be completely off grid sufficient for a long time. And, uh, and like king size bed, like all the things that we wanted in our first bus, we made the changes in this one. But like we said, it just is not feeding us the same as it used to. We're just craving some more international culture, more experiences, and to help other people. So welcome to the front driver area of the bus. Up here in the front of the cab, we left it very much school bus because the whole rest of the rig does not look like a school bus at all anymore. So it's fun to still have those touches. And we have one of our AC units up here. This is a mini split, 12,000 BTU, does heat and AC. It's running off our solar system right now, keeping us nice and cool here on the bus. And we changed out the driver's seat because the school bus seats are super uncomfortable. So we got a really nice captain's chair. I hang my guitar up here, firewood, and then Erica's car garden and some more hanging plants around here. It's a really fun area. 
So this is our living space kind of area. We have our couch right here that pulls out into a bed, which is super versatile. We can sleep like six or seven people really comfortably in here throughout the whole rig. And our solar system is underneath the couch. And speaking of that, we have 2,600 watts of solar up on the roof, 7,200 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And it's a really great system. We don't really ever have to think about it. We got to monitor it. But other than that, it's like plug and play and it works by itself really well. So this is our dining room table right here. This is also a Swiss army knife kind of table. It folds down to make another sleeping area, but it also swivels out to the center of the room so we can have like a community game table, which we've done a lot of times. And it's a really nice table. These seats have really great storage in them. That's like a utility kind of box. And here is all of our shoes. And there's a diesel heater underneath this area as well that keeps the whole front of the bus really nice and hot when we need it. We also have another diesel heater in the back we'll show you later. So with this being our second bus, our first bus we had curtains that worked but they were really kind of a pain and we went with these kind of curtains that you just pull up and they snap up. They're so easy to use and you just pull them down and they lock. It's really nice to have curtains that you can just roll up really quick or roll down really quick without like a lot of setup. So up here in the front, we also have more of these floating shelves. We wanted to keep it really super open. We did a roof raise here in the bus. So we have tons of headroom. We lifted it at 15 inches and we could have done upper cabinets, but we wanted it to feel very open and and very inviting in here. So we went with the upper shelves like this with the copper piping and it works out really good. Nothing ever falls off, tacky tape and all these kind of things works really great. So one of the highlights of the bus is our ceiling. We did a herringbone pattern down the center of it with these really cool color changing LED strip lighting at nighttime, the ambiance in here is amazing. It really did turn out to be one of the most amazing centerpieces that run all the way down the bus. So this is kind of like our in-between of living space in the kitchen and we use it for a lot of different things. We call it the standing desk because we can stand here and work but it's also a really beautiful cedar live edge piece with a cedar backsplash. Most homes have a junk drawer. Well we have four of them because we have a lot of junk so like quick grab tools and just things like this. And these are all on soft clothes, so they never open up. We have this really nice floating bookshelf that just continues on all the way. And our shop vac, which is what we use for a vacuum and a workout drawer and some weights down here. And I cannot forget to mention Erica's essential oil rack, which uh, we use actually all the time. It's really nice to just have them out and open so we can grab them real quick and use them. So this is really not like a bus thing, but it's worth saying we have this sign right here that we'd like to put quotes on. And right now we have bad communication ends a lot of good things. Good communication ends a lot of bad things, which is a super awesome quote. And we try to practice that in our lives. This is the door to our bathroom, but I am so proud to say we came up with this beautiful idea. We didn't come up with it. I'm sure somebody out there has done it, but it turns into our bedroom door when we open it. This is our shower and it's your typical 32 by 32 shower pan. We went with all cedar walls and they're sealed and waterproofed and all that fun stuff. The really cool thing about our shower is that we purposely placed it right uh, where the emergency door exit is. So when our little ones, dog and our daughter, when they're covered in mud, we can just open this puppy up and uh, rinse them off either with this beep, or we just throw them in the shower and, and then they get rinsed off really quick. We have a DIY compost toy that's worked for us for three years now and I have zero complaints. It's, it's just everything we need. Upper storage because I was tired of pulling my toothbrushes out of hidden drawers amongst the bus, so this is magical. And silly, but worth mention, this little towel rack has been a lifesaver. <laughs> Welcome to my bedroom. Here's my, here's my toys. And my toys, I got a boo boo. My toy over here. I have butterflies. Here are my brothers. You can stand up so you can see this. And my map. I'll show you all the things. And Dawson and Carson with my here, Mimi and Gangam live here. It turns off like this, and my music was glow in the dark. That's how close I am. These are my little stuffies. So welcome to the back of the bus. This is where our bed, office, washer machine, and a lot of storage is in our closet. So. 
to start off, I'm standing up on the platform right now. We built a platform over the wheel wells and because we did the roof raise, we have the height to do that. So I still have plenty of clearance here. This platform lifts up and has a lot of storage underneath it. And our washing machine is over here, does a great job. We built all these nice upper cabinets and the office space since we do a lot of video editing and work on the computer. This was really important for us. So we have a really pretty full size closet back here. And then we have these really deep pull out drawers. They're super big. This is my drawer, which is uh, does not normally look that organized, but you know, it is what it is. Working our way back here, we have a king size bed. It's a Serta mattress, it's very, very comfortable. Another mini split, lots of windows that we added in, um, all really good RV windows. With the amount of space back here that we had, we could fit a king size bed and still have storage on the sides of the bed. So they lift up, lots of storage in there. And also when they're down, they dub as little counter spaces that we can put our cups on or charge our phones and whatnot. And the best part about this whole area is that the bed lifts up on gas struts and um, they're really strong gas struts and there's tons of storage back here. And you can see our 200 gallons of water is underneath the bed. So all the plumbing is inside. So it's an all weather bus, really nice to have. And that's Gypsy. And just lots of storage. And even in the back, it just keeps going. It's a ton of space underneath there. Really convenient to have. And right underneath our washing machine is our second diesel heater. So these are more when we're off grid and we need heat because the mini splits in the front and the back, they have heat pumps, so they do heat as well, but the diesel heaters are a lot more energy efficient and they crank heat. They keep the bus really hot, even in super, super cold weather. So, so all in all, this bedroom space is really functional and comfortable. There's a lot of reasons why we've stuck with school buses when we've done home on wheels kind of thing is for one, they're built like tanks and RV, if you get an accident, it literally just blows up and just falls crumbles. apart. Yeah. 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 The school bus uh, is super safe. That was one of the things with having a child that we really prioritize with safety. So we got the seat belts here on the couch and it's a really safe vehicle to be in while driving down the road and it's comfortable. Another reason too is the versatility of it and the high clearance. You know, school buses have like really big, almost semi-truck si size tire wheels, and we have like two feet of clearance. And so we've drove in this bus, even though how big it is, all the way up Vail Pass at 11,000 feet on dirt, crazy mountain roads, and it does it fine. Yeah. Maybe not as easy as like a four by four van, but it makes it. It does. And then we have a home on top of Vail. <laughs> yeah. There's probably really only like one con, but it's also a pro. It's like a mix in between and that's the size of the bus. Mm. Um, and we flat tow our vehicle. So when we're driving down the road, we're pretty long. We're, it's a 40 foot bus and pulling into gas stations and stuff is really the only hard part about driving a bus this long. Otherwise it's just getting used to taking turns a little wider and stuff like that. But then again, on the inside, because of the size, it feels like a real home in here. Mm -hmm. So hey guys, welcome to the outside of the bus. One thing that you'll notice is that it really does not look like a school bus at all anymore. That's mainly because we did a roof raise on it, which means we cut the whole entire roof off, lift, lifted it up, and I re-welded everything back together and did new sheet metal down the sides. And we also took out all the school bus windows and put in these really nice RV windows, which are a lot better for insulation. They look nicer in our opinion, and they're a lot more functional than school bus windows. So working our way down the side of the bus, this is our exterior little pop-up table. It's held on here by a magnet so it doesn't just fly up, folds up, and we have some chains inside of the toolbox, which is right here. This toolbox out here is really nice. We could actually fit about four more of these. We just haven't installed any yet, but I keep all my tools, our hoses, everything like that, extra diesel fuel. And it's just super handy to have all of my tools while we're on the road. So now working our way here to the back of the bus, we tow a vehicle right now. We have our bikes on it and uh, we have an 8.3 Cummins motor in it with an Allison M3060 transmission, which is super, super good engine transmission combo. This bus came from a really wealthy school district out of Arizona when we got it. And so the engine had been maintained phenomenally. I mean, when you change the oil and check the oil, it's all still clean. It's crazy how nice and good of shape this motor is in. 
has about 160,000 miles on it and still runs brand new and tows our Jeep and everything with like no issues at all. Even going up mountain passes, it handles everything we throw at it. And then up top here on the bus is where all of our solar panels are mounted. We have six solar panels that take up just about the whole span of the roof and it's 2,600 watts of solar, which keeps us running without really any compromise. We built this bus to be completely off grid for as long as we want it to be, and the power situation has worked out really good, along with the water storage that we have. So yeah, guys, follow us along on YouTube and hang out with us. If you're interested in the bus, please email me at theirhappytrails at gmail.com, or you can find the link below this video of where the listing is online so you can check out more details. Bye. 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 <laughs>